Welcome to the hands-on portion of this GIS software tutorial. In these videos, I'll walk you through the specific steps so that you can successfully complete the tutorial and learn about how to work with tabular datasets in ArcGIS Pro. Now this GIS software tutorial is going to be driven by the use of a hypothesis about COVID cases in New York State here in the United States where I live. And this is a good way to start any kind of GIS project or spatial analysis to give you some ideas as to what to think about if you're going to investigate a problem and ultimately think spatially. So for example, at the time when I'm creating these videos in the fall of 2021, there's a lot of discussion going on between those that wish to be vaccinated and those that do not wish to be vaccinated. And various government agencies are starting to take measures to try to deal with this situation. So for example, I found this news story that area schools are preparing for weekly testing of COVID staff. And this is the case that some people choose to be vaccinated, but others do not. And those that do not potentially will be have to te be tested more frequently. So it got me thinking about the general discussions about those choosing to be vaccinated and those that are not vaccinated and why people choose not to be vaccinated could be because of any number of reasons. It could be a mistrust of government, a mistrust of the science and so forth. And with that in mind, I'm curious then to see if there's some type of relationship between education level and testing rates. Specifically, I'm going to look into high school graduation rates by county and see if there's any kind of relationship with COVID testing rates. Perhaps people that only have a high school education are more likely to be unvaccinated because they don't trust science and so forth. Now, I'm not doing a formal statistical hypothesis test with this. This is just a loose example to drive the use of data sets we'll download. But I encourage you to follow a similar process. Look for some type of story from the media that can guide you. And then in this tutorial, we're going to work with U.S. Census indicators that I've provided a link in the tutorial that you can find on this web page. And if you look at this web page and you're new to U.S. Census data in general, you'll find literally hundreds, if not thousands of different indicators or data points about populations in the United States. So I encourage you to look through these things and find potential indicators that you can use in this tutorial. And perhaps it could be a process where you go back and forth looking at indicators and then do some web searching to find stories and so forth that can help form your hypothesis and ultimately drive your experiences with this tutorial. And so in my case, I'm interested in education and educational attainment. And in just a moment, I'll come back and we'll download specific data sets related to this indicator. Next, let's go to step two, where I'm gonna download county boundaries from New York. And these county boundaries will give me the basis for conducting my spatial analysis. And it's also just good experience with downloading data on the web and bringing it into ArcGIS Pro. So in the tutorial, I've given you a link to this website, the cartographic boundary shape files. And because I'm interested in the county level, I'm gonna scroll down here, county, and I'm just gonna get the smallest file that I can find. And I'm gonna download it by right-clicking, save link as. And through this entire tutorial, I'm gonna use my C temp directory to store data sets and my ArcGIS Pro project. So I download the county shape files. I show it in the folder. Here it is, I'm gonna right-click unzip and extract it to its own folder. And then in this folder, you see a shape file that we will come back to in just a moment. So now for step three, I'm gonna acquire relevant indicator data sets about my hypothesis. And as I indicated earlier, I'm interested in educational attainment in the United States for New York State County specifically. 
So for that, I'm going to go to this website that I've also provided a link in the tutorial instructions. And I'm going to go right to the advanced search because I know exactly what I'm looking for here. And it's pretty easy to use. And so first I'm going to click on topics, education, educational attainment, and then under geography, I'm going to click county and I'll find my state, New York. And I want all of the counties within New York. And then under years, I want to try to get the most recent data I can. So I'm going to click 2019. And that will guide my search. So if you look at the bottom here, selected filters, I'm educational attainment, all the counties in New York from 2019. I'll hit search. And here it comes right up on the top of my list. And note that there's a one year estimate and also a five year estimate. When I was preparing this tutorial, all of the data was not available for all of the counties in one year. So I'm going to click five year. And then I'm going to go click here in this button that says download. And I'm only interested in that one there. So I just click on that. Download selected. And I've selected the five year. And I'm going to collect a CSV and I'll click download. And again, I'm going to put it in my C temp directory. And this isn't that big of a file size, so I'm going to go download it pretty quickly. I'll do show in folder. And if you're new to working with US Census data sets, they can be a little cryptic in terms of their file names. So American Community Survey, the year, the indicators, and so forth, another zip file. So I'm going to right click on that file, and extract it out to its own folder. And when I open that up, I get three files. And let's actually first look at the metadata file. This tells you what all the field codes mean. So if I, I'm going to use Microsoft Excel, and it's a CSV file. And there's a lot of indicators here. So again, if you're new to working with US Census data sets, they can be a little overwhelming, but their value is that they are the definitive source of data on population characteristics. I'm using education as one example, but as you saw from the previous steps, there's literally hundreds of indicators that you can look into. And they all work, therefore, perfectly inside of tools like ArcGIS Pro. Okay, so now for step four, we're going to curate these indicator data sets so we can get them ready to join onto the New York County shapefile that we downloaded previously. And so to do that, let's open the actual data file up. And I'm going to do this, actually. I'm going to first, even before I open it, I'm going to right-click on it and rename it. And I'm going to call it Five Year. Actually, Five Year EDU. And that's just a name that tells me that this is the five year estimates for education levels. So I open the CSV up. And here's the actual raw data. Now let's take a look at this. If you're new to working with CSV files, especially trying to bring them into a tool like ArcGIS Pro, there's a few things you need to do to make sure everything works correctly. 
Remember that a goal of this tutorial is to learn how to work with tabular data sets and join them onto some kind of reference data set like the county shapefile we downloaded previously. And that join is going to be driven in a couple of cases by both this ID and also this name. And we'll come back to that in future steps, but just make note of that for now. Now, when we look through all of this, there are over a hundred different columns that we can use. Now, when I was preparing this tutorial, there were two columns I've decided to keep for my analysis. One is just the overall number of people that are 25 years or older in the given county. And another is that same population that are high school graduates. And to do that, I looked at that metadata and I found these codes. So this is the first code I'm looking for. And this can be a handy way to find things. And if I scroll that out, there's my population number. That's just a raw count. So I'm going to highlight that row in yellow. And the other column I'm interested in is the population 25 or older that have a high school degree. And again, I use the metadata to find all these. And it's this one here. So I'm going to highlight that one in yellow. So that just gives me a little visual indication. So now I'm going to get this data set ready to bring it into ArcGIS Pro. And CSV files can be problematic on a technical level because of special characters and so forth that can trip it up in terms of it not displaying correctly in ArcGIS Pro. So being aware of that, I'm going to make a few small modifications to this data set to really pare it down so I'm getting just exactly what I need inside of ArcGIS Pro. So one of the first things I'm going to do is change this column heading from the code. I'm just going to call it pop for population. And then I'm going to go over to the other one I'm interested in, the high school graduation rate. I'm going to call it high school with an underscore. And then I'm going to completely get rid of this row because I don't, I already have these row headings. And if you see, GOID and name are both good column names. And then I'm basically just going to delete all of the columns that I don't want to use. So I'm just highlighting those rows, right click and delete. And there's a lot of indicators There's way more data than I actually needed. But this is also just good practice working with CSV data. And feel free to leave a comment below if you know of a better way to kind of uh, scroll all through the columns here. But. OK. But now if you look at this, I've, I've got just a real simple thing. And one other little thing, make note here. Notice the word says Albany County, comma, New York. So as a CSV file, those commas are potentially problematic. And also, I don't really need the word county in there. So what I'm going to do is eliminate the space, the word county, comma, and then New York. So I highlight that part. I put it on my clipboard with control C. Then I do control H for find and replace. Paste that in there and do replace all. 62 replacements, which is good. There's 62 counties in New York State. And so now I've got a nice clean data set. Four columns, 
as you'll see in just a moment, both of those values will be used for joins. And I've got my raw data from the census. So I'll hit save. Close this. And we will now move on to the ArcGIS Pro parts as we've now downloaded and prepared all of our data sets. Hi, this is Brian Tomaszewski. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and share this video. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification icon to stay up to date on new videos from this channel. Thanks for watching.